So, and we were, we are back. Much to your surprise, we have a plan. We do, yes. Whether Janet sticks to it or not, completely different story. But we'll see what we can do. Um, but we're very excited about this new series that we're starting. Um, yes. That Janet is rightfully so very pleased with her titling of it. So I will let you tell them what our new series is. Well, I kind of borrowed it from somebody else who used it a long time ago for something entirely Well, different. I mean, it's a known saying, but we're using it for our series. Yeah. Stop the Insanity. So Stop the Insanity is how so many sewers, the reason that term uh, is apropos, but you may identify with this or you may not. Most sewers identify with this. You purchase a lot of sewing supplies, including patterns that may never get used. And oftentimes when you end up going through your pattern stash, you find out that you've got five, six, maybe a dozen patterns of all similar styles. But you like the collar on this one, and then this one you bought because uh, you really like the pocket treatment, uh, the hemline, whatever it is. And But they're all a basic pattern. Then your next step is to make it fit you. So you either do one or two things. You spend a lot of time altering the pattern, making a muslin, trying it on. Or you just throw caution to the wind and roll the dice and hope like heck it's going to fit and hang right and look good. And then you move on to the next pattern and the next pattern. And you repeat this over and over again. That's the insanity of it all. Because what we're going to start out with is uh, a camp shirt. And we're not going to make a camp shirt pattern. We're not going to buy a camp shirt pattern because we already have a shirt pattern that fits us well. For most of you or many of you or some of you, I don't know the numbers, you made the everybody's shirt in our last sew along. And, um, well, our last one was the double green, but the one before that. So you made that and many of you took the time to do the muslin fitting and to get it just right. So why in the world would we want to go search out a camp shirt pattern, make another muslin, make all the adjustments, transfer them to the paper pattern, and now sew up our camp shirt? I don't mind spending the time to get something done right, but I don't want to keep repeating it and repeating it and yeah. repeating it. Uh, so once you get the basic bodice, pattern correct and fitting you you don't need any other shirt or blouse patterns you can take your nod from any ready-to-wear garment something you see in a catalog something you see on the rack at Nordstrom's you got really like the way they put the slit in the side or the double pocket or the only a collar stand instead of a collar or whatever all these different details those are very easy to apply to a pattern that already fits you. And you don't have to be a pattern drafter to do most of it. So that's what this exercise is going to be all about. And I hope you'll join us because when you can see that in a basic shirt pattern, you could make a crop top, a t-shirt, a blouse, a tunic, a Shorts, shirt, short sleeve. Short, yeah, sh shirt waist dress, a, a nightgown. You can make anything that's got to fit the torso of the body just by adding and subtracting pattern pieces or making some slight changes. So why not kind of dive into this and as opposed to spending a lot of time buying and searching patterns and then the storage of it all. That's always a yes. big... Uh, conversation we've even had people say to us well that's something we'd like to hear about on Tuesdays at 2 how do you store your patterns how do you keep them organized and I think everybody has uh their own system their or own, not or none and if you don't have a system you probably never will so yeah you don't you don't really but and that's not a knock because I'm more of one of those some things have a system some things are gonna have gonna have a system or should or maybe will or whatever.
But that's life, you know. We get some things better organized yes. than others. But with this process, what Janet is trying to say is, you get your shirt. So she's saying, um, most of you did the Shirt Makers Express or the Everybody. They did shirt. the Everybody's in the last so long. Right, but we've done this one too, or not? Or they ha might have this, this is one. The Craftsy. Yes, that's the Craftsy Shirt Making class, and this is the one we did, we did here. This so long, sorry. Yeah. I've been away a couple of weeks. Um. So, but what the point is, is most of you or a lot of you have these already. And the point being, now you can work off of them to create something so you don't have all those patterns in storage just to have a short sleeve version of this or a tunic version of this or whatever. Mm -hmm. And that's going to save you storage. It's going to save you money. And a lot of time. And it's going to save you time because if you put the effort in, which which we show you how to do here, you put the effort in to getting that shirt to fit, then all you have to do is make the changes that you want to make. Instead of buying a whole new pattern, putting all the work in to make it fit, and ha already having the changes, you're saving money by having it fit first because we all know that's the hardest part. Yeah. You know how to sew. Some of you know how to sew really fast and efficient. Others are a little bit slower. Some of you are new at sewing, but you know how to sew. You know how to operate the sewing machine. Uh, so you're always going to be able to whip these up. And there's lots and lots of different changes. And we'll talk about, you know, some of the different aspects. And maybe you'll give us some questions. Well, how would I, you know, make this change or add this element to, or I saw this great designer look, but I don't know how to, how would you do that? Yeah. So anyway. So, Connie has a question already. Cool. I, she says, I really like this idea. Oh, good. What if I didn't do the everybody shirt? If you didn't do the everybody shirt, you need to do a shirt. Yeah. It, the concept is we're not working specifically off of this. We're letting you guys know, like, we already, one. yeah, we already did this one together. So a lot of you already have it. Or if you've taken Janet's crafty class, you have that one. But the concept of this series is not specific to our pattern, but it will be better if you, we will be working off of our patterns. So, and what the difference between these two, because that's going to be the next question, I do believe this one has less seaming. There are less seams in this. Um, this one has like, a, where's all the drawings? It's not here. There it is. So you can see from the back drawing, how am I doing, Jess? Good, actually. Okay, yeah. she seems surprised. But you can see that yeah. extra seaming in the lower back. They both have a yoke, and this one also has a two-piece sleeve. Let me get it a little bit closer. And they both have uh, darts, uh, long darts. Let's see if this one has. The, yes, they both have lo the long fisheye front darts. So whichever place you start, then we're going to go from here into making a camp shirt. And then when you see the minor changes that we make to have an entirely different shirt, then I think your imagination will open up to other aspects. And, of course, we'll be sharing some ideas as well. So the quick answer to your question is you don't have to have done everybody's shirt to follow along and learn with us. To be most successful at this, what do you suggest, Janet? Well, here's what I suggest. Okay, we do have the camp shirt kits, and they're on the website now. And you choose between these two patterns to do your starter. So if you've already purchased one or both of these and made your muslin, then you can get the camp shirt kit that doesn't include the pattern. But the deluxe one includes a pattern. So this is a personal choice. Take a look at it. Which one appeals to you more? And that's the one uh, that you will start with, okay? And you're going to um, make a muslin. Now, some of us are ahead of you. We've already made our fitting muslin. And, um, but this is all going to be on YouTube. So as long as you uh, get started now, you won't be, you know, year light years behind us or anything. But um, that's what you'll have to do because you do need to get a fit, that's our main thing. And then you can take this pattern and slice and dice it and add and subtract and have a huge wardrobe of uh, lovely garments just from one simple pattern.
pattern. And that goes for uh, lots of things, but we're just going to go with the shirt right now, but we're going to be covering other things later in the series. Yes. So this is not just about shirt making. Um, so I know Janet has said it in our ramblings, but specifically the first section of this series is turning one um, of these shirts or something similar into a camp shirt. We're coming into the warmer months. Some of you much more warm already, <laughs> not us. Um, and this will give you a nice fun project while learning these tips and ways to change your pattern without having to buy a new one. And so. the change of weather leads us to the fabric in these yes. kits too, which is the lawn. So we do have kits um, for this project available is what Janet is saying. And 13? 13 lawns to choose from. So we have some real pretty ones, what we call our pretty collection, and then we have our cute collection. So you can kind of look through those and, and choose. And this is from our pretty collection? Yes, it is. And this is our 45 wides. We do have four that are 58 to 60 wide. Um, that's our cute collection. And But anyway, whichever you're able to choose any of the lawns that are available. And if you're not familiar with lawn, I'll give you the quick primer. Lawn is 100% cotton fabric in this case. You could have other fibers in lawn, but in this one, it's 100% cotton. And this is the fabric that a lot of people choose to wear in the tropics, in Hawaii, in Panama, places where they're close to the equator and it's where always it's more pretty. necessary to wear it than just fun. Right, right. So having a nice short sleeve cotton shirt is nice in the summer and it's cool. But when you make it out of lawn, it's almost like it's air conditioned because it is a very fine fiber, but it's tightly woven. So it has a, a nice uh, light drape to it, um, but it's very cool and very breathable. So again, you those of you who've already made some lawn, you know that it's it's easy to work with. And it's very, very comfortable. And we've been selling lawn and kits for lawn for the um, the Islander shirt, which is also kind of a camp shirt. It's more like a Hawaiian shirt. And it's a, it's a boxier shirt. It's a boxier shirt. So in this case, you'll be able to make uh, a camp shirt that's a little more feminine and a little yeah. more fitted because this one's yeah. got darts. Our Islander shirt is very popular pattern. It's a unisex pattern, but with it being unisex, it does have a little bit of the boxier fit, which some people really enjoy. But this is giving you an option for a little something different, like Janet said, a little more fitted look, um, but still the camp shirt style. Yeah. And the other thing about the lawns that I shared with everyone several times is that it lasts a very long time. It's a very high quality cotton. So even though it's lightweight, it's a, it is a durable. So it's not like you're going to have yeah, it for let one the, season. Don't let the lightness of it fool you. Yeah, yeah, I've got one here in the studio in the back that I purchased out of lawn. And it's well over 10 years old. And I wear it every summer. As a matter of fact, there's a little rip in it, but I repaired it little rip right in the fabric but i repaired it because i love that shirt so much <laughs> it's, but is I, it white it's pink and white oh yep yeah. okay i know got yeah. it yep and so i uh i i want to make it last a little longer but now i'm gonna make some so well now you have a pretty collection to choose from yes i do <laughs> so i made this one before i went on vacation okay so if you have trouble making decisions um get on and check out those kits because there's 13 <laughs> fabrics to choose from um what else is in the kit well you're going to get the light and stable interfacing and remember that the, because this is lightweight fabric you do not want anything heavier than the light and stable so in the case of the collar we're going to put the light and stable on the collar and on the collar facing um, because it's so lightweight, we can't put too heavy of an interfacing in there. So light and stable is perfect. So you're going to get a yard of that, which is more than you more need. More than you need. And you're going to get seven buttons that coordinate with the fabric. And we always say the only thing you need to do is add thread. And in the case of this particular fabric, you need to add a specific type of thread. 
you cannot successfully use a, a regular construction thread with lawn. And the reason is, is that the lawn, again, is that very fine thread that it's woven with. So when you take a thread that's several times heavier to try and stitch it together, it puckers. So the seams will pucker and ripple. And there isn't anything you can do to make them not. I adjust the tension, do what you will. It needs to be a fine thread. So what do we mean by fine thread? Well, at least a 60 to 50 weight. 60 or 50 weight is what we prefer. Now, dual duty had a fine thread. That's the coats. Coats, the coats dual, duty, dual duty. Uh, they have um, a fine thread. And when we were doing the kits for the Islander shirt, you know, we told everybody and we gave them the place to get it from. Well, guess what? We went to order some the other day and they only had two colors in stock. Well, that won't do. And now we found that Coates has rebranded the thread and calls it paper piecing thread, but we still couldn't find any vast array of colors or even people that carried it. So we did a little more research. And actually when I stitched this shirt together the day before I went on vacation and I couldn't find the fine thread, I used 60 weight embroidery thread. I said, what the heck, I'll try it. It worked just fine. However, in a lot of cases, you're not gonna wanna use embroidery thread because it is shiny. It might be shinier than you want. You can't tell on this particular print. Um, so you really would be best off with a polyester thread that wasn't shiny, something that's a matte finish. So anyway, we found one. It's 60 weight, 50 weight, 50 weight, 50 weight. 50 weight. And it is by Superior Threads, and it's called So Fine, S-O space F-I-N-E. And they have a bazillion colors, and it comes in cones as well as spools. So take a look at that, because you're going to definitely want a fine thread. You can't substitute a heavier thread and have a nice looking project. So if you can find the Coats brand, it's 60 weight, um, especially if you just need a neutral color, that they definitely offer that. Um, if you're looking for more variety of colors, then look for the Superior Threads 50 weight, so fine. They sell it on their website. Mm -hmm. You know, some shops, they only sell to independents. They don't sell to chain stores, Superior. So some of your independent shops may carry it. But I doubt they're going to carry the variety of colors that they have on their website. So that's our suggestions. If you find something similar that works for you at your local store, then that's fine too. But we want to point you in the right direction um, so you don't have to do the legwork. And the kits come in two options on top of your 13 fabric choices. You can get it with or without the pattern. So if you already own the pattern and you don't need one, you can get the kit without the pattern. But if you get it with the pattern, you have a choice between these two. So yes. you can choose either. So or. if you already have the everybody's and you want the other one, then get the kit with that or just get it without, whatever. Just, you know, weigh out your options. <laughs> hey, did you have any other questions before we go on to the... Liz is asking, or Wilson, Wilson Liz, Liz Wilson is asking what is the date again of like when we're doing this we're starting now <laughs> today's the 12th <laughs> next week we will well i will do the demo on some of the changes that you would need to make i'm not going to sew this for you because i already sewed yes. both of these already you can get this one on youtube and this one on craftsy um, there's not a big difference. I mean, this one's got more pieces, but they go together exactly the same way. Um, so what I'm going to do is demonstrate to you what you need to do to get the right sleeve, pocket, and hemline changes made to the pattern. And then you'll sew it up the same way. And if you haven't sewn it before and you need the sewing, again, YouTube or Craftsy. Right. So this isn't a, a sew along, 
its um, changes of the pattern. We'll show you how to do it. You can do it at home. You can do it with us. But it's not a sew along of the complete shirt. Because we've done that already. And with all of our events like this, Liz and Wilson. <laughs> I, I think it, it says Wilson, Liz. Okay. Uh, Liz, um, they don't go away. So you could start right along with us right in real time or you can pick this up six months from now and we've got lots of people on an everyday basis picking up some of our sew alongs and just getting started and we might have done that sew along two years ago so they're always going to be there and you can refer to them when you go to make it again or whatever but you don't have to be in real time and i really recommend that you watch us in real time and then review it again before you do it so watch it kind of think about it let it kind of ruminate there in your brain and then when you get out all your supplies and go to do it watch it again and we always try to start the following episode with questions from the first so don't feel like oh well they did that last week i can't ask this week no that's the point for you to watch and do and come back and if you had any questions or problems you can ask us and you can always email us. You know, I'm all, uh, Brenda and I monitor the uh, email questions coming in, and we answer them as soon as we are available to do so. Okay. So now we want to talk about the sloper. Uh, Anthony, are no. you recommending the regular so fine or the 60 weight so fine? Oh, the 60 weight. It's got to be... You have 50 weight here. I'm sorry. Which one am I... Okay, so then the superior is 50 and the dual duty is 60. I got them backwards. Yes, but yes. Anthony is making it sound like they might have two. I don't know, Anthony, if they do, but I know you want the lightweight. You want the 100% polyester and the 60... But if it's 50 or 60 weight, does it matter? Is it both no. of those fine enough? Correct. The 50 weight that they have in Superior is bo pre-wound bobbins. They might have a few cones, and they call it bobbin thread. So their 50 weight, yeah, they have it. But most of the color uh, assortment that I could see in my fast research was pre-wound bobbins, and I wanted spools or cones. So At the end of the day, if you're looking for this, you want cotton no sorry you don't want cotton. Mm. but 50 or 60 weight in that range doesn't specifically matter but that i've used weight. both and they both work fine for getting a nice smooth uh stitching line and not puckered and liz and it is liz says you <laughs> can get the thread so fine on amazon if you can't get to a store there you go and again, Superior ships off of their website, too, because that's where I just ordered. All right. So hopefully we tried to Yeah, that. yeah. I know. He's right, though. They do have the 50 weight, mm -hmm. but I didn't look through the whole well, you site. Have 50 weight here. Uh, they have 60 and 50 uh, right. Superior. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the finer one they have, which is probably the 60, is the pre-wound bobbins and the 50 is uh the spools and cones okay i don't want to say it again because i'm going to mix it up again yeah so. okay that's it I'm just get 50 it. or 60 weight doesn't matter <laughs> polly polly is stronger <laughs> polly. polly is stronger and holly says if with that finer thread weight what this is a good question what and type of needle what size and type of needle do you like I use the 10 Microtex from Schmetz, size 10 Microtech from Schmetz. And that's a good place to start. You may find an 11 Universal works fine. I don't know. You know, the, sometimes it, if you're like me, it's what's in the drawer <laughs> and you see what'll work and you do a little test. But, uh, if you're going to go purchase them, that's what I would get. We, that's what we did all of our lawns with before, and I did this one with. So, yep. Right. And for those of you who don't know, SchmetzNeedles.com 
has a needle advisory. So you can go on there and you can find out if you don't know or you're having problems with skip stitches or something's not what needle should I use for XYZ? And it will give you the right recommendations. Maybe more than one recommendation, but uh, it's really a nice uh, thing to have, nice tool to have. Okay. Ready to talk about slopers? Always. Okay. So we have a little change in things here at Islander Sewing Systems. And that is um, the way that we're going to critique slopers. So up until now, we just said, send in some pictures. And I did my best to squeeze out some time to evaluate them and send back directions. And um, it's very time consuming. And we've had to make the decision that for uh, so other, you can ask some basic questions. I'm always going to be here for basic questions, but to submit photographs and to get a full uh, critique, there uh, is going to be um, some charge and we're going to, yeah, a minimal charge. Um, so we're going to announce that next week and it'll be available on the website. I know there's one or two people that I'm working with right now. We'll just get you finished up and that'll be that. But from this point forward, what I want you to do, and, and you know, once you've done this, you're going to learn it, and then you won't need me anymore. So this is a very valuable thing to have. But on the site is this form for you to print out, and it gives you a visual of how to create your muslin and step-by-step -step instructions on how to create and fit the muslin. And one of the things that I... I'm having the greatest difficulty communicating. There's two things. One is that you must do this in a one step at a time order. So in other words, I will get people to, that'll send me their picture and they'll have sewn every piece of the garment together, including the hem. And then they'll say, oh, it doesn't fit right. What should I do? Well, I can't help you because you've sewn the whole thing together. You have to sew it one step at a time. And that is in these directions. But if we're gonna make a basic bodice, we're gonna baste up the side seams so that we can get it on our body. And then we're gonna pin the shoulder seams. And we're gonna make sure that we're not leaving any gaps or puckers or bubbles anyplace else by smoothing those seams up together. But when we smooth those seams up together, here's the other thing that I'm having trouble communicating. The raw edges are not likely to meet. They don't, they aren't going to go together. So in other words, I have people who will put it together just like they would any other time and then take a narrower seam or a deeper seam, hoping to fix something. But if you need to take more fabric from the back and not any from the front, you cannot keep those raw edges together anymore. So in other words, maybe the front of the pattern fits you, but the back is too big or too small or vice versa. We have all have unique bodies. There are no two alike with the exception of identical twins. Even and I don't, then. and that doesn't even always fall true. So you've, this is what, what I want you to do. As you pull that up, and for the shoulder seams and the side seams, you really need some support. I've been trying to fit myself recently, and I need Brenda's help. So you're going to bring those up, and there might be a half-inch difference between the seam allowance from the back and the seam allowance from the front. You're going to pin it, and you're going to mark right where those pins are on both of them. That's the stitching line. That is the stitching line. You may have changed the stitching line for the front and the back, or maybe just one of them. Then we're going to give you the primer for that too, as to how now to measure beyond that stitching line to add the seam allowance that you want. Whatever seam allowance you want. Then you transfer that to the pattern, and now you're good to go. But you've got to do this one step at a time. Those seams need to be completely straight and centered on your shoulder. Then you're going to move to the side seams, and they need to be exactly the same. They need to be 
perfectly centered under your arm and go completely straight completely perpendicular to the floor they're going to go straight down if they're pitching to the back or pitching to the front they're wrong so those are the things i want you to think about as you create your muslin it'll be faster and easier for both of us and i'll get back to you next week here on tuesdays at two about how we're going to proceed with muslin uh sloper fitting okay is that does well, they, you were going to tell them they can also check out that series on the YouTube playlist to learn more, right? Yeah, we, I did during COVID. Um, I put together a uh, woven bodice series and a knit fit series. So those are in the playlist on our YouTube, and you could take a look at those as well. And if you're into knits, we've got one of these for knits as well, and it's free download on the website to help you stay on track and do it one step at a time all right any questions let us know um on here or you can reach out at islander sewing at comcast.net and on top of our 13 cotton lawns <laughs> we also have some other new fabric right we had two new cotton lawns this week so we got this in a pink so this exact same one in a pink and another one called Scarlet Impressions. So you take a look at that on the website. But we got in two New Jersey knits, uh, a salmon pink and a pink orchid. But we have a couple of bamboos back. So we haven't been able to have bamboo knit for a while. Remember the supply chain thing wasn't working. And uh, finally, things are opening up again. So if you were looking for those bamboos, because I know we had a couple people keep asking. So we have a cornflower blue and what I'm calling a robin's egg green. Now I know that sounds weird, but the crayon, the crayon, whatever way you want to say it, that I pulled out of the box that best fit it said robin's egg blue on it, but it doesn't look blue to me. It doesn't look robin's egg blue to me at all. It looks green. Now I grew up in Michigan. I know what robin's eggs look like. And that is not the color. Let me pull it over. Oh, we've started something. Well, you tell me. Does this look like a robin's egg to you? Excuse me, Crayola. Janet would like to speak to you. <laughs> no, I would just call that teal. Yeah. So I called it because of the crayon saying. But it's not green. Well, it's not blue either. It's in between. Yeah. Teal. That's what teal is. So that's well, why. we just call it teal. Well, anyway, too late. The teal is called Robin's Egg Green. <laughs> but anyway, they're beautiful, and I'm glad to have bamboos back. Just cutting one today, I remembered how lush they are. So, that's our new fabric. This was a lot of information. Yeah. It is. It's because it is teal, Cassie. It looks <laughs> teal because it's teal. Cassie, tell us about that event you went to. I didn't have... You know they can't hear her, right? I know, she can type Bridgerton. So the picture, if you saw the newsletter today, Cassie had, now did you make both of those costumes is my first question. And secondly, what was this Bridgerton event like? I mean, were you able to go and watch a filming or was it a party? Yeah, that, Bridgerton is some kind of a TV series. I, I'm aware. Well, I wasn't. Thanks for educating her, Cassie. <laughs> but then I then I started thinking, well, what was it that she got to go to? So anyway. So if you don't know what Janet's talking about, in the newsletter, um, there is a picture of Cassie and her sister, and she made both of the costumes. It's called the Bridgerton Experience, and it's based on the show, is what she said, and they went to it. Um, there's also a picture of a sh shirt that... Um, oh, Susan Alexander Su made yep. the Guayvira. Beautiful, beautiful um, shirt. We just like, oh, Cassie said, it was a ball. Oh, how cool. Everyone was dressed up in costume. So we just gave a shout out to some of you lovely, lovely customers and friends in there. So check that out. So that's what we're talking about. There's a picture of Cassie and her sister in the costumes that Cassie made. Very cool. Um, yeah, we love to see your makes and we like to put them in the newsletter or your 
experience or comments um we've started a column called what our customers say mm -hmm. yeah so we love to hear from you but that guivira you know i considered making a guivira pattern several years ago uh, it'll come, come out in october don't worry guys. i know i wouldn't do it i don't know anything i don't it's know almost anything. done it's a lot of detail she started it 13 years no. ago it's almost done no i just only it never got out of here i only considered it and said what are you crazy I mean, there are so many beautiful little tiny tucks and pleats, and then sometimes embroidery. And you saw what she did; it was it was fabulous. And it's definitely uh, a labor of love and a work of art all in one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, check that out. And the teal fabric—that's how we got here. <laughs> uh, and check out those kits. We've given you a lot of information today. We were gone for only two weeks, and we've just laid it on the kits and the bodice and the fabric and the other fabric, and we're starting this series. But stop the insanity. We've started a little insanity to stop the insanity. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> it's true. But it all makes sense as we go through it and we're going to have lots of fun and we want to hear what you know what it is you're looking for as we go along the way yeah so, so next week we'll get started correct with showing them some of the pattern changes, changes. Mm -hmm. how you start those changes mm -hmm. and they're they're very very doable i'm you know i'm not looking to try and make pattern drafters or pattern designers out of uh, you unless that's something you want to do and we've got lots of materials for that But this whole series is just about showing you that you don't have to be a pattern drafter to make um, Some of the basic changes needed to make a pattern go further and be more versatile Yeah, yeah all those things so we'll be back next Tuesday With that if you have any questions in the meantime on the kits the patterns um, the series, whatever, Islander Sewing at Comcast.net, you will get you the quickest response. That is true. And we will see you next week on Tuesday at 2 Eastern, Eastern time. time here at Islander Sewing Systems. I'm Janet Prey. This is Jessica Johnson. And we, we've enjoyed our time with you. Thank you so much. Happy to be back. See you next week.